the most beautiful thing. My grandmother is so old. No one knew how old she is. Not me, not my big sister, Doug, not our older cousins, Lay. My father was patiently when we tried to guess her age. He is my grandma's lind and youngest child, and even she does not know how old she is. We know that my grandma was born on the other side of the world, across a white ocean. My grandmother came from a time and a place where creature are cat in the jungles waiting to chase unwary children. She told us that she once looked into the gleaming eyes of a tiger and felt its hot breath on her face. By the time I was born, my grandmother already had an old woman's face. Her skin was soft but dry, like paper, and in her mouth was a single tooth. Grandmother said, it is the only thing standing strong in my mouth. This finally tooth has my, that my mother and father gave me. I asked to see a picture of her parents. She said me nay. They lived in a time long before the monk learned of such things as photographs. She pointed the her heart. The only picture I have of them is here. The luckiest of the grandchildren got to help take care of grandmother. Lay got to wash grandmother's clothes by hand at the bedroom sink with sweet smelling pink soap. Dev got to wash grandmother's soft brow back in the bathtub with a soapy cloth. And me, I got to clip her fingernails and toenails while grandmother sat on her paper stool in the light from the wind. I can still feel the rawness of grandmother's hairs in my hand, the thickness of her tail tunnel in between my finger I can see the bottoms of her feet thick, thick and brown and broken deep cr cracks filled with dirt from long ago and far away. Grandmother told me that her mother and father died when she was a little girl. Grandmother was just a child herself, but she had to take care of her two younger brothers and baby sister. I looked up at my grandma from the place where I sat at her feet, and I asked it, how did you get food for them? Grandmother said, I didn't find enough food. We like it always with hunger eating us on the side. Inside, all my love with her, even with just her one tooth, Grandma never said no when we offered her something to eat. The ice cream truck was singing 
each song from down the street. I look at underneath the couch of quarters. They were known, so I got ice cubes from the freezer. I offered one to Rima in my red plastic cup. She smiled at me. When I wanted a new dress to wear on the first day of third grade, my mother said she did not have enough money. She found some knickers and a dime in her purse and different than to be. I bought hard peppermint candies from the neighborhood grocery at the corner of our block. When I got home, I offered one to grandmother on the palm of my hand. She smiled at me. At the round table with each Hacky legs. I asked, you said my spoon to mix and mix in the central soup bowl. We all shared there were the two, no piece of meat, only bones and soft greens. My father said the price of meat is too expensive at the market. Me name. I found a thick chunk of bone and offered it to Grandma on my spoon. She smiled at me. We had plenty of meat only. When we celebrated Hamburg New Year with our aunt, uncle, and cousins, the old table has was heavy with whole boiled chickens, more than our family could ne- ever eat. After dinner, our village full my cousins and I sat on the carpet around Grandma. As, as she told us stories, she always began, it was a long time ago, and I was just a girl. As my listener, our eyes grew round, Grandma twisted her fingers one over the other to show us what the hands of boy need to just spring the size of child look at like she taught us how to listen for the cross of the fearsome film new face by holding our breath until our hearts pounded in our ears. We were we were always said when Aunt Charlotte called it time for the toilet to help clean up. On a cold day, when the snow blew onto the window panes and the light was still, I asked Grandma about the dirt in her feet. She told me she didn't have she, after her mother and father died, she went shoreless to the mountain to tend to the family field. She ventured into the jungle to look for white roots, bamboo shoots, and edible mushrooms. And one day, she was chased by a tiger as she fled. Her bare feet broke open up 
on the fallen branch and she still ran blood and dirt mixing into the clay with each step. I squeezed her feet in my arms and pulled them close to my heart. A huge for the heart roots she walked to get to me. Each year, cutting my grandma's nail went faster because I grew stronger and bigger and more ever each grand year. Grandma's feet felt smaller and s smaller in my hand and my leg. Her stories too show slowed with the passing years. The pause between her words grew long. Sometimes, as Grandma was looking for the words she lost to the ear, I grew distracted from my task, looking at the toys on the floor that needed to be picked up, the un unfinished schoolwork, the young child looked for needed to be better. Her deep even breathing would call me back to the moment only to find her eyes closed in sleep. One hand pressed against the window to cradle her head. I grew unhappy with our life. I was tired of getting ice cubes from the freezer when I wanted ice cream. I was tired of never getting the new dress for the first day of school. I was tired of having the bone in the soup when I wanted meat for myself and my grandma. One evening, I studied my face in the bathroom mirror, wishing my teeth were straight, I came out of the bedroom and said, Mom and Dad, I want Ren says, can I have them? My mother looked up from nursing my baby sister and said, we don't have any money. Maybe next year, my father looked up for my toddler sister, he was bouncing on his legs and said, I wish we could get your braces. Me name, but we can't right now. My grandmother looked cut up from her special school by the big window. Kalia, she said, look at me. I turned to her in the glow of a eerie evening, the sun of glow in the sky and its golden light fell on her face. Grandma asked, is my smile not beautiful? In that moment, I could see all the times my grandma has smiled at me. I could taste the cold ice juice that melted summer heat from our tongues, the sweetest of the hard peppermint candies and the deep flavors of the bone broth in bo the bowls of boiled green. Even now, I can still see my grandma's single tooth white against the shadows to dink tall in her open mouth. Her smile was the most beautiful thing.